Hi there, Grade 11s. I thought I would kick off this new year with a bit of algebra revision. Um, so all these questions you would have covered similar ones in Grade 10. Um, so please pause the video once you've seen the question and make an attempt at it yourself before pushing play and seeing the solution. Right, so question 1.1, these two questions here have the heading to simplify. And simplifying questions often entail to remove the brackets. So we're going to multiply it out or make it look simpler. And in this case here, removing of brackets. So the first question, you've got two sets of brackets here, both containing binomials. There are both two terms in each of these brackets. So you would recall the method called FOIL, where you are going to multiply these items out here. So the first two terms must get multiplied as part of the f over there. x over 4 times x over 4 is x squared over 16. The outers would be x over 4 times 1, which remains x over 4. The inners is negative 1 times x over 4, which is negative x over 4. And the last is negative 1 times positive 1, which is negative 1. At this stage, we have to look for the like terms, and these two terms in the middle here are like terms, x over 4, negative x over 4, those two terms would cancel, and our final answer would be x squared over 16 minus 1. Okay, we can't join those two terms together because they are not like terms. In 1.1.2, it's a bit of a longer question, but here we're just going to be multiplying out more brackets. So, in the first case, negative a squared must be multiplied into this bracket. And this part of the question, it's not quite FOIL, it's a bit more than FOIL, but you're going to have to multiply the a through to the other bracket and the negative 2 through. So, first of all, negative a squared times a is negative a cubed, and negative a squared times 2 is negative 2a squared. Focusing on this bracket, a times a squared is a cubed, a times 2a is 2a squared, and a times 4 is 4a. The negative 2 must be multiplied in, negative 2 times a squared is negative 2a squared, negative 2 times 2a is negative 4a, and the last one, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Let's look for like terms. Negative a cubed and positive a cubed are going to cancel each other out. Negative 2a squared and 2a squared are going to cancel each other out. And we've got this here, a negative 2a squared left. We've got a 4a over there and a negative 4a over there. They're going to cancel. And we've got a negative 8 left over there. Once again, those two terms cannot join together as they are unlike terms. So those two questions are simplifying questions. You see our answers in the end have got no brackets. Moving to question 1.2, the heading here involves factorizing. Now factorizing questions here often involve bring brackets in, okay, or make the brackets return to the question where the first part times brackets out. And the methods that are at your disposal here are highest common factor, which includes grouping, difference of two squares, quadratic trinomial, sum of cubes, and difference of cubes. So the first one to look at here, 5x squared minus 13x minus 28, which of those methods do you suggest using to factorize that question? The answer, quadratic trinomial. Now various methods are at your disposal to do this, because there's a 5 in front of the x squared, it makes it possibly a little bit trickier. So watch one of the methods you could use. It's called the cross method. So how can you get to 5x squared? One of the options, 5x times x. In fact, the only option in this case. So I'll put them on the side of my cross. The next decision is how to get to 28. Now the options could be, let's say, 1 times 28, or 2 times 14 or 4 times 7, right? Bearing in mind that the combination of these factors, as well as the 5x and the x, need to work together to give me negative 13x. 
So the one that I'm going to choose is 4 and 7. Now, if I use my cross method, you might have to do it a few times until you get the right answer. But if I put my 7 over there, I times it along this cross, 7 times x is 7x, and 5x times 4 is 20x. Can those two terms, 7x and 20x, give me negative 13x? Yes, I can get negative 13x if the 20x is negative and the 7x is positive. Now, if this 7x must be positive, it means there's a positive over there. And if this negative 20x is negative, it's a negative over there. So my two brackets that I'm going to use are going to be 5x plus 7 and x minus 4. How would you choose or how would you check your work rather if you wanted to see whether you factorize correctly? You would foil this on a separate piece of paper. Not Don't go foil now. And if you can get back to the question, you foiled or you factorized correctly. In 1.2.3, they've given you now four terms to consider. In the case of having four terms, you may possibly use highest common factor, but even more particularly, you're going to make use of grouping. Difference of two squares won't work because they're four terms. Quadratic trinomial won't work, they need three, and here they are four. So we are going to group these four terms off into pairs. And there might be different ways to do it, but often try group one and two terms together and term three and term four together. Often the easiest way to try first. So is there something common between term one and term two? The answer is yes. If you take out the highest common factor there, you would take out a three. What is left? 2a minus 3. Right? Now if we focus on these two terms over there, is there something common between those two terms? And the answer is yes. You could take out a what? An a, b. If you leave this as a positive, and you take out an a, b between these two terms, what will be left? 3 is left over there, minus 2a is left over there. So if I had times this back in, I would get back to those two terms. However, looking at my answer as it stands, we need to do a bit of work. Because ideally, I want this bracket to be the same as that bracket. So if I choose to leave this bracket as it is, and I want this bracket to become 2a minus 3, it requires me to take out a negative sign from this bracket. I'm changing this negative sign. Negative 2a is now a positive 2a. This positive 3 is now a negative 3, requiring this positive ab to become a negative ab. At this stage, we've got one, two terms. Is there something common between those two terms? Yes. 2a minus 3, the bracket, is common. And what remains? 3 remains in this term, and negative ab remains in that term. We have now successfully factorized this question using grouping. Okay, moving on to 1.3. Got the question written out here. The heading here is also entitled Simplify. So we are aiming to make this answer simpler, but here we've got the addition of fractions. Notice this is not an equation, so we cannot get rid of the denominators. The denominators are here to stay. So whenever we are adding fractions together, the lowest common denominator is super duper important. Remember the denominator beneath the 1 is 1. So what denominators do we have? We've got 1, we've got x minus 1, and we've got x minus 3. So what is the lowest common denominator that these three terms can have? And the answer is x minus 1, x minus 3. Right. So if we had to now group or put this as one big fraction instead of three separate fractions, x minus 1 and x minus 3 is my LCD. Meaning that this one over there needs to get the entire denominator multiplied in its numerator. So x minus 1 and x minus 3 would be at this numerator place here. The second term already had an x minus 3 and now got an uh, x minus 1, sorry, and now got an x minus 3 joined to its denominator. 
meaning that the 3 at the numerator must also get an x minus 3. Whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. In the same way, this denominator already had an x minus 3, but now needs to get an x minus 1. So the last part for us to just finish off here is to simplify the numerator. So we're going to FOIL there to give me x squared minus 3x minus x plus 3. Do you agree? We're going to times in this bracket plus 3x minus 9. And we're going to times this bracket in plus 2x minus 2. And remember we are still all over x minus 1 and x minus 3. So our final answer with our same denominator still we're going to now simplify. x squared at the top has got no like terms, so it remains x squared. Negative 3x minus another x, or let's rather say negative 3x and plus 3x cancel out. And negative x plus 2x is plus x. So that takes that one and that one. 3 minus 9 is negative 6 minus another 2 is negative 8. So there's our final answer. Possibly you could consider quadratic trinomial over there, but it would not work. So you would just remain over there as your final, final answer. In 1.3.2, you are dealing with exponents, where the x and the variable are up in the exponent. You are multiplying three parts together at the top, and you've got one denominator part at the bottom. You will notice, however, that this denominator has a base of 8. We would far rather have it be 2. Now if I change 8, it becomes 2 to the power 3, all to the power x minus 1. At the same stage, by looking at the numerator, 2 to the power x plus 1, 2 to the power x, 2 to the power negative 2, whenever the bases are the same and you are multiplying, all you do is add the exponents. So you can join them into one piece at the top and you're going to say 2 to the power now let's add the exponents. So x plus 1 plus x plus negative 2. So the negative will win that one. And there is my numerator in one item. So it's simplifying the top. 2 to the power x and there's another x will be 2x. 1 and minus 2 will be minus 1. At the denominator, this 3 needs to be multiplied out. So you are going to get 2 to the power 3x minus 3. Right. At this stage, you may consider trying to cancel these out. But because our exponents are different, you would be tempted to leave it. And I'm going to wrap it up this way rather. If you had the expression, let's say, x to the 5 over x to the 2, what would you have done again? Can you recall? This x squared would have been cancelled out, and this x to the 5 would have become x to the 3. And our answer would have been x to the 3. And the way that we do that in another angle is to say x to the power 5 minus 2, which is the same x to the power 3. So basically, if you have the bases at the numerator and the denominator being the same, you can convert it by saying 2 to the power, the top, 2x minus 1, minus the bottom, 3x minus 3. Just like we said 5 minus 2, giving us 3, we are going to take the top one and subtract the bottom one. So let's simplify it. 2 to the power 2x minus 1, minus gets times in, so minus 3x and plus 3. Final answer will be 2 to the power 2x minus 3x is negative x, and negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Right. You're welcome to leave your answer like that. If they insist that you remove the negative exponent here, that's another story. But I'm fully happy with that being your final answer, one term much simpler than the original question. The last question that we're going to look at is question 1.4. And it is our only equation that we're going to look at. Solving for x. Here we've got an equal sign, and our goal is to say x is equal to something. You will notice that this here on the left has got a base of 3, while this here has 1 over 27 does not have a base of 3. 
The idea here is for us to get both the left and the right to have the same basis. So what do you reckon we're going to change? Are we going to change this side or are we going to change the right side? The answer is to leave the left side and to get 1 over 27 as 3 to the power of something. Now, 27 is 3 cubed. If I want to get that 3 cubed to the top of my fraction, it would be the same as saying 3 to the power negative 3. You agree? Because our left side and our right side now both have the bases of 3, and it's an equation with an equal sign, we can drop the bases, drop the 3s, and have negative 2x equals negative 3, making x equal to negative 3 over negative 2, which obviously is equal to 3 over 2. Right, I trust that this little recap of grade 10 algebra is to your benefit. I hope you've dusted off some cobwebs and are ready for your grade 11 year. Right, stay tuned for another video.